Hey guys, Mitch here. Uh, so this is going to be the last part of the interaction series. Um, it's going to be about uh, interacting using timers and stuff, like time-based interactions. So you see it in some games where um, there's no button, so buttonless interaction where you look at a part of the menu and a little spinner will pop up and then if you look at it for a certain amount of time, um, the button will activate. Um, so it's going to be pretty easy. We're going to use UMG, an experimental 3D widget, uh, which would be cool. Um, I'm using 4.11 for this one because we'll need 4.11 just for some of the things I want to do. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into it. Uh, so I might just uh, move these things out of the way from the last episode just so we have a clean slate. Um, and go ahead and create the material we need for the spinner thing. Um, so if I just go this uh, UI circle maybe. And I'm just going to double click and open that up. And we're just going to make sure the domain is a user interface because um, it's still allowed to be used with UMG. And we're going to do one thing first. We're going to grab a texture coordinate. And this will basically give us a 2D gradient like going from uh, up, down, and left, right. And then there's another thing we're going to grab. It is. Uh, vector to um, radius radial value. There we go. And this will allow us to get our circle out of these gradients. Um, so I just create one there. And you'll see if I just put in uh, linear distance, uh, we get a nice sort of gradient, but it's not quite what we want. We want like a circle. Um, so what we'll do is it's actually like the top left, so we need to first scale it and then um, move it over. Uh, so luckily there's already a node for that, so if we do a constant bias and scale, and then we can um, bias it by, uh, let's say, negative 0.5 to move it over to where we want and we can scale it to the 2 and then it'll scale back down because uh, it scaled up for us so that should work and so we've got our circle now and what we need to do now is I'm just gonna we want to have uh, inverse so I'm just gonna go 1 minus and that'll invert it for us so now we have a white circle instead of a black one and then um, I want to get two circles, I want to have an inner one and an outer one, and the inner one will be able to scale and take away from the outer one. So to get the outer one is pretty easy, I'm just going to chuck in a ceiling, which will just convert this all to white, and that's basically our, our outer circle. For the inner one, um, I'm just going to subtract a certain value, um, that's going to be our the width of the inner circle, so I'm just going to name that. Um, and take a value of let's say 0.2 and I'm going to subtract that and then I'm just going to seal this as well cool and just to make sure I'm going to clamp it and now we get a small circle and a bigger circle and it's as easy as subtracting the two Cool, and you'll see we have our little thing. Brilliant. Um, so next thing we want to do, as I said, um, is have a little clock animation sort of thing. Not like a clock, but like a radial um, spinner sort of thing. Um, so luckily we already have that in this vector converted to angle. So if I put that in here, you'll see that it's almost right. Um, it gives us our little gradient we want, but it's... Um, pointing to the right where we want it to point up. Um, so basically we just need to rotate it. Uh, so an easy way to do that is just to swizzle it. Uh, we just want to, not the X, Y, Z, just the X and Y. Yep, and now it's facing down, which is not quite what we want, but we're getting there. Uh, just so we can now one minus here and just invert it basically, which will mean it'll point up and perfect. And so we're going to do a similar thing to what we did here, um, where we're just going to 
uh, add a certain value, which is going to be our percent, and we can add that there. And then we're just going to floor that. And then we should have our nice little gradient clock looking thing. Yeah, cool. And then to add those two together, I am just going to grab this one, our circle here, and I'm going to subtract our thing here and put those into, if we make this masked, put that into our opacity mask. And for the color, I'm just going to put a vector 3 parameter, name it color, just in case you want to change it later, and make it white, and just chuck that in. And so now we have both of our parameters set up, we can dynamically change the width of our inner circle, which is cool. I'm going to leave that back to 0 0.2. Point two. And then we can also change the percent of our uh, circle's completion, which is cool, exactly what we want. So put that back at 0, apply that, save that. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to get the time from each object we look at. Um, so I'm just going to check that into our interactable interface. So I'm just going to add a function, uh, let's call it get focus time active, I guess. Cool. And that's going to return just a time variable, which is a float. Um, and so if I just go, say, you know, like into our interactable cube, and here in interfaces, you'll see this function which created. If I double click on that, we can return, say, three seconds. And this is going to be the time that um, it takes before this is active when we look at it. Cool. Um, I'm just going to hit save. And now I'm just going into our test pawn. And we're just going to um, do the interaction now. So basically what we want to do is we want to create a timer variable here. So I'll just create an interaction timer. And I'll make, make this a of type timer. And then I'm going to um, actually, no, we'll do that later. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that if we're every time we look away, so every time we call this blur, I need to first clear this timer if it has anything in it. Should be good. And just another one here, clear timer by handle. Should be good. And then um, what I want to do is on focus, I want to get this focus object. And I can call um, get, what would we call it? Uh, get focus time active, was it? Get focus timer active message. And this will basically go to that object um, and then call that function on that interface and return the time that we specified on the object. And so I want to do that. And I'm just going to uh, promote it to a variable so we can use it later in our UI. Um, interaction. Uh, uh, interaction total time, I guess. That's good enough. And so I'm going to do this on both branches of this. Um, I'm just going to copy it over actually. And so now we have that. I can call um, set timer by function name. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the object we focused, and I'm going to call the um, on activate uh, function from that. And that's actually that function that we defined in this interface. Um, so we'll call that, func that interface function 
at, on a timer and that time will be the time that we returned from our get focus time active interface call. And I will set the interaction timer to be this and I will do that and I'll do that and that. And so what should happen is in our interactable cube we have said uh, three seconds is the time that we'll, uh, we look at the, at the cube and then it'll automatically activate. So if I place our cube here, move it up a little bit, grab my headset, um, hit play, I should get the normal um, uh, hover if I just get rid of the health and safety warning, warning. And then after three seconds it should activate. Three seconds, one, two, three. Hmm, okay, let's look at this. Um, go back into here. Ah, okay, uh, this wasn't connected. Um, okay, there, now it should work. So, after three seconds, so one, two, three. There we go. Okay, now I look away, come back. One, two, three. Yes, cool. All right, so we know that's working. Um, but it's pretty disappointing there's no UI or anything. Um, so what we're going to do is just create a UMG widget. So if we go right click, um, user interface, widget blueprint, and let's call this uh, circle widget, for lack of a better name, uh, go back, go into UMG. And then I'm just going to go, I'm just going to create a image. There we go. And then I want to just center this. So I'm going to set our anchors to the middle. And then I've already done some, something that done this before. So I think, um, uh, size is to 256 by 256 and then I can zero these out and I actually want one, negative 128 and negative 128 for that and now it's fully centered in the canvas um, and then for our appearance we're just gonna for this image grab our UI circle and this looks pretty cool and um, yeah, I think that's pretty good on this end. Uh, so I'm just going to save, compile, and go into our graph. And then on the event tick, on the tick, uh, we're just doing a couple of things. So I'm just going to grab the player point, and then I'm going to cast to our uh, test point we created. And I'm going to do a few things. I'm going to grab our timer. timer. And I'm going to grab our interaction total time. And this will just get our percentage. Uh, so we're going to grab this uh, here, which I'm just going to rename uh, to circle. And I'm just going to grab the circle. And I'm just going to grab our dynamic material. So this will be able to change the um, uh, circles percent completion, completion, and then I'm going to get a set scalar parameter, and it's going to be percentage. And so I'm going to, um, so when this interaction timer um, is empty, the get timer remaining time by handle will return a negative one. So we're just going to handle that. So I'm just going to check if this is active and I'm going to select float and if it is active we want to do so I get our math but if it's not active then I just want to set it to one which is nothing so hide and I grab this and this time remaining by handle, if I divide this by our total time, then I'll get value between 0 and 1. And I'm just going to clamp it just to make sure. 
And I'll put that into our A slot, and we should be done for now. Uh, so now all I need to do is just add that to the player. So if we go back into the test, and then um, in 4.11, we're just gonna, I'm just going to add a scene component. This should just, just be the base for our camera. And I'm going to grab the camera, drag that there. Um, this is just like a 4.11 bug, but um, anyway. Um, and now I'm going to grab a widget component. Um, so this is a 3D widget, which will allow us to have UMG in uh, world space. So I'm going to select our widget class. It's going to be a uh, widget, circle widget, sorry. And I'm just going to scale this down to, say, uh, 0.1. And drag it out uh, about 170 centimeters. Rotate it 180. Uh, I might make it 0.2, actually. Yeah. And we should be good. Oh wait, I uh, forgot to attach this to the camera. It's probably a good idea. There we go. So um, this circle will grab our percentage value. Is it percentage? Oh wait, no, I called it percent. Okay. Um, so this uh, circle will grab our percent and then uh, set it to the material parameter. So if I go ahead and test this, if I look away, there should be nothing, which there is, which is good. And then we look towards, and the circle fills in, and then boom. And I look away, and back, and boom. And of course, you can change the time on this, so if I just create three here and say grab this interactable cube um, change it to like say one second and this can also that can also be an instance variable so you can just change it on each instance of the circle if you need or object and if we look boom, boom. yeah cool so I think that's pretty cool um, pretty convincing and if you're on a device with like no input say I don't know, there's not many these days, but if you just uh, want look interaction, that's how you can do it. Um, yeah, any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, next video will probably be something different than interaction, which would be fun. Uh, yeah, have a nice day.